So the tie between uh, sexual health and biohacking, yeah. I think, is fascinating. I was listening to a podcast. I think it was uh, Peter Atia, and sure. he was saying um, ovarian health and fertility is one of like the biggest indicators for a woman's lifespan and health span, which was really interesting yeah. to me. So we think fertility, and we think, oh, is whether or not you want to have babies, and it's like, no, you want to actually try to figure out how to extend your fertile years yes. as long as possible because that actually keeps you young and healthy. It's funny you mentioned this because I literally had just given a presentation in the last week on actually last I've given like two presentations in the last month on female longevity. So like even though I'm the CEO of the Adamo, I also still run a medical practice and I do focus on longevity and health span. And I'm also actively investigating I, I just for fun due diligence on all these companies because I'm like fascinated by the space. And there is so much stuff happening happening in regenerative medicine. Like I've seen miracles through new modalities and technologies that I never thought were possible. And so I'm very interested in, um, first of all, mitochondrial research and mitochondrial health is one of my fortes. It's like one of the main things that I've studied. And the ovaries are one of the most concentrated places in the body of mitochondria. Mm. And the sad thing about being a female is that we are, our ovaries age faster than all of our other organs. Whoa. Which is super unfair because we're basically, this is part of the reason why women go through perimenopause and start experiencing the effects of aging faster than men, why men age so well, mm -hmm. is because they get testosterone for longer. And unfortunately, there's been this women's health initiative that's basically made hormones seem like defi de definitively going to give you cancer. And that's actually the opposite. There's a, there's a lot of research coming out on bioidentical hormones actually potentially preventing cancer. Right, because it wasn't the application incorrect. So back in the '90s, when they were doing it, and they had this study that has been debunked that was saying that it does increase. Health it, it was because they had they an imbalance of testosterone and progesterone. Like they were just giving you women they one were, or the other. So they were just giving they were giving women, um, like, this form of progesterone that was synthetic mm -hmm. and that was not. I mean, actually, it was derived from horse urine. And so most of what is being given to women these days, if you're have a really good doctor and you're lucky and you know what they're they know what they're doing and by the way hormones are not like you have to actually do a lot of education as a doctor to start understanding hormones and I'm still learning about how to use them and I'm still and I've been and I've been working with them for years mm -hmm. but we as like the millennial generation is entering perimenopause and we are decidedly not going to age like our parents we are going to be using hormones earlier everyone is buying these home testing kits like Ova and Myra to be able to actually see your hormones changing. Because every month, the thing about perimenopause is your hormones are changing and fluctuating. So some months you might feel estrogen dominance, some months you might feel progesterone deficiency, which feels like estrogen dominance. And then some months you might feel like estrogen deficiency as you get older. And the problem with this is that most doctors aren't running like full panels of labs, aren't, aren't even paying attention to the monthly fluctuations. Mm -hmm. And frankly, right now, the way that, I mean, I'm not saying this is the problem, but the way that hormones are dosed right now is all symptoms based. Mm -hmm. But you, that means you as a patient need to learn about what these symptoms look like. And so I think there's going to be a huge wave of just perimenopause companies. And I'm already talking to like five right now um, because we want to partner with these companies that are prescribing hormones because hormones can be one of the greatest biohacks for female sexuality, like vaginal estrogen, topical estrogen, oral progesterone, sublingual progesterone, topical testosterone, like all of these things will rejuvenate your body. And you can run, if you're really that scared of cancer, you can run um, Cancer Check Labs, which is a company that I'm starting to advise that's a blood testing company for cancer. And mm. it's really advanced, way better company than Grail. And um, I even, ha I send patients to go get Pernuvo scans, which are really great too. And, um, and that, there's a lot we can do to catch cancer early if you're that concerned about it. And obviously if you have a family history of breast cancer um, or ovarian cancer, you have to be much more careful. But um, I think we're entering a really exciting moment in female like health in investing in female longevity. And so going back to this concept of ovarian aging, there's companies like Oviva. Um, the CEO, Daisy Robinson, is investigating malarian inhibiting substance. And this is a hormone in the body that regulates the release of eggs. And what they're aiming to do is figure out, can we keep, can we give you, can we, can we allow you to keep your eggs for longer? And what's the best way to do that? And can we ex can we actually extend the number of years of fertility? Because that could potentially extend health significantly, right? Mm -hmm. On top of that, a lot of women are, are picking up on this concept of rapamycin, right? So rapamycin, the reason, uh, this vibrant study just came out and basically demonstrated that they could potentially give women five extra years, years five extra years of fertility with rapamycin, which is like 
bananas and I'm actually about to start it because I'm like, shit, I need so to So what like, is ripamycin? Ripamycin is an mTOR inhibitor. Peter Atia is, um, you know, Peter Atia and I have very similar practices. I work one-on-one -on -one and I do a lot of health coaching, but he has an entire team of people that work with clients. Um, but both of us are focused on how do we help predict and prevent chronic illnesses, right? And so ripamycin is this mTOR inhibitor. And in, in, in um, animal models, it can extend the life of animals dramatically, like 30%, Whoa. which is crazy. So he takes it, Amy Killen takes it, and a lot of a lot of people that I admire really take it. Is it a I prescription? It's a prescription. Okay. You can get it from the company Joy, J-O-I. And yes, I know I talk about a lot of companies, but I'm an entrepreneur and, and also <laughs> I advise a lot of companies and I frankly am fascinated by the people on the bleeding edge of technology because they are typically 10 to 15 years ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And you want to listen to those people because they usually look, I mean, the, the, key, the trick is if you're going to try to follow a health longevity guru, do they look young? Yes. Do and they? obviously, <laughs> yes. I, it's so funny. I was like on the airplane <laughs> on the way here and I was crying over a breakup. And I was like, I was like, I had literally rolled out of bed at six o'clock. My flight left at seven. Somehow I got on the flight and I'm sitting there outside moping. And this woman comes up to me and she's like, you're so beautiful. I'm like, what are you talking about? I've been crying for a half an hour. And she's like, you're, you just look so young and youthful. And I was like, I'm 40. And she's like, how are you 40? I didn't and I'm believe like, you. Yeah. I was like, how? Is, it's funny because like, I, I know people think it looks, it's crazy, but I, I committed my life to optimizing health. And so when you spend a decade of your life, more than a decade, I started educating medical students. As a medical student, I developed a course on evidence-based lifestyle medicine when I was a medical student because I saw it was missing from our education. So I've always been oriented not just around sickness, but how do you measure and optimize health?